So before we get started in the regular meeting, this is a, a good focus group. I have a couple of guests on today, so I just kind of want to go over a couple of things that I would notice about uh, your account. First, take that oh, 165 students divided into 19,000. Yes. That would give you a student value. So student value is divided by. divided by the active students, which shows us how much each student's paying average per month. Not that they're paying that, but that's how the, the school calculates One, student value. 120, 20, so that's low. Okay, so Michael's at 120. Um, so when you start looking at his numbers, and not, I'm trying to, trying to help him give you some uh, guys some ideas also. He's teaching and Tom Baker's teaching. Tom Baker's uh, charging, I think, 135 a month. What are you charging? Um, 135 for our basic program. Okay, so they're charging basically the same price. Tom is getting $180 student value where you're getting uh, $120 student value. So you can imagine if you increased $60, now you'd have 165 people paying $60 more. Not that they're actually paying more, it's just I'll right. do the calculations. Now, just knowing Tom very good, I know he did really good on retail. Uh, this uh, past Saturday, I was at his school. He came out with a neat new T-shirt. In fact, if you can see his picture on the screen, it's right behind him. He sold 200 of those T-shirts at graduation. Wow. So 200 T-shirts at $25. We're talking $5,000 in T-shirts. So that's huge. He also had testing. So when we start looking at your numbers, the first kind of – Thing like we talk about red lights on your dashboard. If I know you're grossing 19 and you took 14 in from your check, there's money to be had from down payments, paid in fulls, renewals, upgrades, upgrade paid in fulls, events, and all the rest of the income generators. So this is the month that you should kind of look at that. Um, you have one or two, just one person doing an upgrade, giving you three thousand dollars. That's going to bump you right up to twenty-two thousand. Um, you come up with some type of pro shop idea, some special event, and you can get that. So the whole kind of concept for this month, if I was you, is how do I double my billing check? How do I do fourteen thousand in house? And that'd be your first thing. If you did that, I mean, you're going to be way up in like the. Hundred and sixty to one hundred eighty dollars student value. Okay, but that's the first thing we look for. I know that Tom Baker's probably doing low to mid twenties in his billing check from ASF. The rest is done in house, and that's the difference in the schools that do a high student value and a larger gross. So I mean, for you doing one hundred twenty is not bad. When I first started working with Tom Baker a few years ago, his student value was ninety four dollars. And so now you went from 94 to 180. So it's just a matter of going into a little of those details on how you do your billing. Okay. But you're really strong with 165 students. So if I'm sitting at a school right now, 165 students thinking, what's going to happen if I increase the student value? Huge opportunities. So okay. you, you should see some jumps really, really quick. Okay. Let me share my screen so I can show you. Okay, so the kind of the goal for uh, today's meeting is that we want to kind of go over the end of the month. It's the end of the third quarter. So every time we end the quarter, we just do kind of a checkup from the neck up. And the first thing is to review your stats. So if you're kind of watching this, you know, when I asked Michael a couple questions, he was able to get those answers for me. So I know he's keeping statistics either through his uh, computer or on, uh, his, uh, his, with his billing company software. Uh, this is a quote that we did at the beginning of last month. That which is measured improves. That which is measured and reported improves dramatically. So now that we know Michael is doing this in the school, we know that he's measuring things. And now once he reports it, now he can improve. So if you're not keeping stats, this is just kind of a reminder to keep stats. Um, one of the things you may want to look at, and I thought this was pretty cool that uh, Mike also had, he had how many people that inquired from his uh, uh, website. So I would find out how many inquiries I got everywhere. So on my website, 
people walking into my school, people calling me, um, just approaching one of our students, asking about what does it take to get involved into your school. Now from there, you want, you want to look at how many people you actually signed up. Your goal would be 50%. So if I talk to 25 people, I should get 12 to 13 people to sign up. If I'm not even close to that, now I've got to look farther. It's like when your light comes on, it says check engine. Well, it doesn't really tell you what's wrong, but tells you you have something going wrong. Then you have to have it diagnosed. So if all of a sudden you say, man, all these people inquired, but half of them didn't sign up, there's something wrong. And this is what I'm going to suggest that you plan for October. Each week in October, because we just ended a quarter, I would like to have you review one of the major systems. So week number one in October, I'd like to have you review phone call inquiries. You may do this sometimes, but I want to make sure your entire team knows it. Week after that, we're going to go to how to make sure that our people that make appointments actually show up. So, you know, we always have people that sign up for the classes and don't show up. So what we want to do is really work on the second week on how we can improve that. Week number three, we're going to role play, practice, drill, and rehearse intros. In week number four, we're going to role play, practice, drill, and rehearse sign-up procedures. I know we've done this in the past, but again, it's practice. It's constantly drilling and rehearsing that gets us up to the top level. So that's going to be kind of our plan for October for staff meetings. Now, um, we talk about some people think that training the martial arts business, they feel uncomfortable, and I say, well, it's like suffering, so we've got to get the suffering out. So, for instance, if I'm Tom Baker and I've got my team, and he has maybe 10 people on this team that is going to do phone call procedure. Now, I'm not saying he has 10 staff members, but he has 10 people that should be able to explain how to get involved in the school. So if he's got a junior instructor and someone sees that junior instructor bashes and goes, hey, don't you work at the karate school? And they go, yeah, they go, how do I get involved? You know, how, how, what's the cost to join? He should be able to handle that question and actually make an appointment. So now you've got your team, six or eight, ten people, how many people are going to do that? And you do a phone call, you don't have to do it individually, you can have some fun with it. You can go ring, ring, and everyone goes, hey, thanks for calling East West Karate, this is so-and-so, how can I help you? So now everyone's doing it at the same time. And then I'm just going to give you a couple of ideas. We have a whisper it. So, hi, thanks for calling East West Karate, Greg Skill is speaking. And then we'll have them yell it, and so they have to yell it out. And then we'll have to, have to talk with a, uh, a foreign accent. But the importance of doing that, if I ask someone to yell and scream it out, they're thinking about yelling and screaming it out. If they're thinking about that, they're not thinking about the words, so I know the words are memorized. Plus, it's just more fun. So when we start doing this, we're trying to, try to give you ideas each week to make this training fun. And again, you may be doing it good, but could it be uh, done better? Probably. So that's what we're going to take from our stats this month, that if you are getting at least 50% of the people that inquire signing up, you're doing good. If you're not there yet, we've got to make sure we practice doing reverse uh, the four major systems. Next thing for new students, I want you to raise the bar. Whatever you did for September, I want you to do more in October. And the reason I want uh, to do that and really concentrate on a lot of this marketing is October is probably the last good month for signing up new students for the rest of the year. Because this is what happens. You get into November, and all of a sudden people start thinking about Thanksgiving. Um, they're thinking about your holiday sale. Um, they're thinking about if they're going to travel to someplace. They're also already thinking about um, what they're going to be buying people for Christmas. So November is never a great month. I mean, we always sign people up, but it's never a great month. And then in December, people have uh, things that they're doing, holiday parties, things that they are you know, shopping. So they really don't want to get started in something. They may buy a gift certificate for someone else, but a lot of people want to wait to after the first of the year. So we got to pack them in with new students in October. If we get them on a short-term program or a mini that's phenomenal because now we have opportunities in November and December to uh, get them on either an upgrade or a leadership program. This week, uh, this was actually a note for Monday. This is a bonus week. That's kind of the fifth week of the month. So we really have the time to uh, 
get away from our regular curricul curriculum and just have fun in class. And during these bonus weeks, it gives us time to make sure everything's cleaned up. So what I mean by cleaned up, if last week was graduation, you have certain people that may have, uh, were supposed to be at graduation, got sick or didn't make it, got to make sure they get their belts and certificates. You may have someone who just didn't do their uh, stripe test, didn't pass, and so they didn't graduate, so we got to make sure they get some extra help. So by being a bonus week, the classes should be good, but it doesn't mean that the master instructor has to be on the floor. So it gives you an opportunity to get things caught up, make sure everyone's uh, got their belt, they're all caught up from stripe testing, and um, you're ready to start the new curriculum next week. And marketing for October, I'm going to get to next. And then at the very end of this, I'm just going to talk real fast about your third quarter finances. Okay, so we have so much to do in um, October. First, uh, once you start October, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. These are some rack cards we have. If you haven't ordered the rack cards, no big deal. Um, you still want to do something in your school that shows that um, you have some uh, community awareness and that you're doing something positive for the community and you can raise some money and donate it to some type of cancer research. So if you didn't get these cards, no big deal. Um, you can actually advertise this program on Facebook, telling people that anyone who signs up for new classes in October uh, the, the uh, proceeds of that are going to be donated to cancer research. Also, you should be selling pink belts and pink and black belts in your school. I know it kind of sounds corny, but the kids love to do it. Uh, the parents love to do some type of contribution where they know the money's going uh, someplace great. So if you buy the pink belts, sell them, you know, pretty high price, good $20, $25. I know it's overpriced for a belt but the, all the profit from this goes to cancer research. So there's a good reason for overcharging for the belts. Also with the belts, you should give a certificate for two classes or two free weeks. So now that students buy these to get a, a certificate for two free weeks, they're not gonna use them because they're already taking lessons. So the whole idea is for them to present it to either the mom, aunt, um, grandmother, um, their school teacher, so now you're selling these belts, you're raising money for cancer research, and everyone who buys one gets two free classes or two free months or two free weeks. And uh, so now you have a, uh, a chance of getting prospects and new students. The pink and black belts are for instructors. They look really, really cool. If you order those from Century, take a picture with the instructors, uh, plaster it all over Facebook. Also talk to the parents when you're, uh, they're finishing up classes. Tell them that you know, um, you're having this drive to do some cancer research. If they could share your Facebook posts with all their friends, that could really help people and make more donations for the school. And also it may inspire some moms to get involved and do some martial arts. So that's the pink. Next we have Columbus Day. Columbus Day, most schools, school systems have it off. It's just a great time to do a day camp in your school. What's nice about day camps, it's not a luxury for most people, it's a necessity. Meaning that there's a lot of parents that go to work, uh, they don't want to hire a babysitter, they don't want to have their kids stay home alone, so they love to have them go to your school, do something positive, be around safe people, and be around positive people. So that's a, an event, it's a full day event where the parents drop the kids off in the morning and pick them up in the evening. That's a $50 camp. I suggested that you do, because of Columbus Day, kind of around the world training. So when kids come in, your training is going to be divided up into maybe do some Muay Thai from Thailand. Um, you can do some uh, Taekwondo kicking from Korea. You can pick up a uh, martial arts weapon from Japan, like uh, nunchucks. If you want to do some boxing techniques, some BJJ. There, there's plenty of techniques you can use. Pick up like six systems. So that'd be the, the fun thing in it for the kids. They get a chan uh, chance to train in all these different styles from around the world in a single day. Kind of another theme, so I get the parents uh, really liking this, is the whole idea of changing your limiting beliefs. Use Columbus as an example, uh, believing that the world was round, and he was not, wasn't gonna fall off the edge, 
he didn't have any limiting beliefs, so he left short. So talk to the kids about uh, that during class. So now you've got something that appeals to the parents and the fun factor that appeals to the kids. It is also National Bully Awareness Month. So I started thinking about all the different ways we've tried to do anti-bullying events. One of the challenges we've had in the past is we do an anti-bullying event, and so it seems that we're targeting kids that are getting bullied. When you target kids that are getting bullied, sometimes they don't want to attend because you know it's going to make them feel funny. Other cooler kids in school may not want to come because they think they're going to be hanging around with all the kids that are getting bullied. So I think just by changing the name to Stand Up Against Bullying. So now the whole idea is we uh, teach a good class, and I've got the whole class written out for you. And the whole thing is not just what to do if you're being bullied, but what you can do if you see someone else getting bullied. How you can change the dynamics of your school by standing up against bullying. So when we're doing this and we're talking about this, we're really going to get a lot of parents on our side. And I mean, just parents, raise your hand if you would like to stand up. No, don't even raise your hand. Stand up if you're going to stand up against bullying. So now all the parents stand up and go, thank you. You know, you're really supporting our school. I put some messages on our Facebook. Could you please share those with all your friends? Now, along with that message is the time and date of your event. Your event doesn't have to be a Friday or Saturday. It could be during your classes. In fact, I usually try to do something like this on my very busiest day. I know I'm going to have a lot of kids come in. Since they're coming in, it's really easy for them to bring friends. So you probably can have a very successful event if you do this like on a uh, Tuesday or Thursday night when most schools have uh, the most students. <clears throat> now to really uh, um, push this home, I'm going to make sure that every class m ends with some type of message about bullying. I gave you a website last time. Let's see if I can... Uh, Pull this up. <laughs> okay, the, the site is called Pacers Kids Against Bullying. This is just a great site for you to uh, use to get some information about bullying. Uh, one of the things I really like, they have a uh, section here called uh, Ask Carmen. Uh, this is all about Carmen, this girl who runs this website, her advice. And these are the different topics. You know, they have one here, it's kind of the difference between telling and tattling. Um, what happens if uh, a bully laughs at me? So it's all these different things, and she actually just gives you the question that someone sent to her and her answer. So if you're doing these in class, at the end of each class, it may take you 60 seconds, two minutes, by the end of that, you're helping the kids because I guarantee you have some kids in your class that are having these challenges. So you're doing something positive for the kids. The parents see what you're really trying to do, how you're trying to get all the kids to stand up against bullying. And now they're going to be buying into this to help you promote this to the community. So it's really important that not only do we plan this event, that we share on Facebook, but we really educate the parents and all the kids on what we're doing so we have a great anti-bullying event. Uh, so then again, make sure you have handouts, that you uh, push this on Facebook. Again, use these as class messages. I really like the idea is that all the kids are sitting down and you go, stand up, if, or you know, raise your hand if you can stand up against bullying. And then, no, 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 stand up if you're gonna stand up against bullying. Get all the kids really active. You've got two to three weeks to really push this in your school. And the chances are you're going to really pack this and get some uh, um, great, great publicity out of it and do something uh, huge for your community. Then we have in the last week of the month, Halloween marketing. Now for marketing, this is one of those things that uh, you should spend a little money on marketing for Halloween. Um, I, I know some people say, well, you know, I hate to spend money on marketing. I'd rather just do it on Facebook. Facebook's good, but we also want to drive people to our website. One way we can drive people to our website is a different type of marketing. Now, this picture for this card is actually a spectacular special. These are cards that you would put out in different uh, stores in your area. Uh, if you go to getstudents.com, 
Um, you'll see these cards on the back of the cards are Halloween safety tips. So now the whole idea is you're walking into businesses in your area, say, hey, you know, my great name's Greg Silva. I own East West Karate down the street. We're really trying to keep kids safe in the community. In fact, that's our mission this year, is to make sure kids stay safe on Halloween. If you have these Halloween safety tips, would you mind handing them out to your customers? He may say, well, we're kind of busy here, but you can put them on the counter. So the whole idea is to get these out into a couple hundred locations in your area so you've got that type of marketing. Also, when you go to getstudents.com, you'll see cards that look like this that are smaller, that they don't have a special, they have free two weeks. Those are meant to uh, be used by your students and your families to hand out with the candy that they give away to trick-or-treaters. So now you got Michael there with 165 students. So he's got 165 families, say 120 participate. They all give out 30 of these cards to trick-or-treaters, and he's getting out to 4,000 people in his area without doing anything except giving packages of them to the, the kids. One uh, last thing that I would recommend. If you go to get students, again, we try to be consistent. So if we look at uh, uh, other Halloween things we have, we have Halloween clings. So we have clings for your front window that uh, will take up like an entire door. So your door has trick or treat. So now people that see the rack cards, see posts on Facebook, are getting these as Halloween trick or treat cards. You know, they know it's your school that's putting this on. So again, try not to skimp too much money. I saw a good thing in Maya the other day. It says, if you wanna save money, save money on toilet paper, not your marketing. So in other words, there's things in your school that you're spending money on that you probably could cut back on. Cutting back on marketing is not probably the smartest thing. Cut back on marketing, you cut back on your prospects, you cut, on your, cut back on your students, you cut back on your gross. So if you need to save some money, save some money on some paper, some uh, uh, cleaning supplies, or uh, do your mirrors yourself, but make sure you have a good uh, marketing budget, especially for months like Halloween. I will send this to everyone. This is my idea of a class plan. So if I was doing the Stand Up Against Bullying, I have a class plan written out. It's a lot of physical activity. I don't want the kids just sitting there hearing uh, stories about bullying. I want them punching, blocking, kicking, doing martial arts. I like to have them break a board. Uh, the whole idea about breaking the board is teaching them the difference between problems and solutions. If I'm teaching them a palm heel, and then I say, okay, we're gonna break a board with the palm heel, the board is the problem. The board is the bully. We don't wanna concentrate on the problem, we wanna concentrate on the solution. So we're gonna smash right through that. So now they're breaking a board with a palm heel. Really good fun for them, they can even write something on the board, now they have something to go home with to, to brag to their parents. And then after all that, then we're gonna talk about bullying. After we're talking about bullying, I would uh, present a mini program, and I would just tell parents, I get, hey, if you really love your kids, I would give them a belt. You know, the belt I would give them is the yellow belt. Give them the opportunity to earn a yellow belt. It means so much. They're gonna be setting a goal, they're gonna be gaining confidence, they're gonna be building self-esteem, they're gonna learn how to be more polite, more respectful. So this would be your uh, class, and I will send this out to everyone. In fact, I'm gonna send a recording of this uh, out to everyone too with the printed sheets so you'll actually have the class. So again, marketing for October is just huge. Okay, last thing, hey, uh, Tom Baker's online. This is a picture of uh, front of uh, Mr. Baker's school uh, this past Saturday, he had graduation. This was a really cool weekend in my town because uh, I live in Mesa. Within our town, we have three United Professionals Cornerman schools. We've got Tom Baker's, Derek Freighter's, and Adam Gilbart's. They're all within probably five miles of each other. Uh, they had graduations at different times Saturday. 700 kids graduated. Over 2,000 parents and friends watched classes. It was just huge. But this is what Tom Baker's school looks like uh, during his graduation. There's people actually graduating inside. There's new people rising, arriving for the new graduation. Uh, in the center of those poles, you can see a bounce house. 
The whole idea is his graduation is about celebration. The kids have already worked hard. They've taken their serious test. Now it's a time to have fun and graduate. So when he, uh, kids come in, they do a little bit of martial arts, they watch a demonstration, they get their certificate, and then they go out on the sidewalk and celebrate. He has um, vendors there that people that business they work with that have like uh, um, his rack cards or that he does promotional booths. He allows them to set up tables. So they had all kinds of food, hot dogs, uh, guys are uh, cooking hot dogs. They had uh, a whole section of healthy foods. So it was just a great event. So just kind of wanted to show that picture and give a shout out to Mr. Baker. Um, <laughs> since I know I'm going to get a smile on uh, Michael's face here because Mr. Baker did over $12,000 this day between testing fees and t-shirts. So it was a $12,000 day above and beyond everything else. Okay, now we talked about looking at our numbers as far as student numbers to make sure that we're uh, signing up to the right amount of people. Now I just want to kind of end this with just talking about third quarter numbers as far as finances to your school. You ended the third quarter, so now's a good time to look at your numbers to date. Look at your expenses. Is there something on your sheets, expenses, that you can cut down on? Again, I've already warned you, you know, it's marketing, if you wasted some money on marketing, maybe at some expenses, but if there's other things, if you're spending too much for your um, uh, tuition billing, if you're paying too much to have your school clean, there's a ways you can cut back so you can increase the, uh, the profit of your school without increasing the revenue. Next thing you want to look at is profit. If you've been with Corner Man, I mean, I can just, you know, I see some people online that have really improved their gross. They've almost doubled their gross a month to month. So you're going to have more profit in your school. Now, with more profit comes some challenges because the two biggest expenses in your school are savings and taxes. So when you start saying, well, you know, I improved my gross by $10,000, that's great. Just remember that if that $10,000 is profit, $2,500 or more of that goes to the tax man. So as you start earning more, you have to make sure you save more. Save more for your savings and save more for taxes. Also, we want to uh, think about investing. If we are going to save money, and I'm going to put $10,000 away. How can I make sure I get more money than just the $10,000? So first thing, this is a good time to look at your accounting and even share it with your accountant. So your accountant can tell you what you have to do in the next three months to prepare for taxes. Uh, I've seen some schools that are doing really good, and all of a sudden the accountant gives them some creative ideas to defer taxes. Maybe it's putting money in a, uh, um, an IRA account. It could be that your tax uh, person's gonna say, let's try to get a little ahead on your rent. If you pay your uh, next year's uh, January and February rent now, since you have a little extra money, um, that's going to be a bigger expense. You're going to show less profit. You don't have to pay for your rent in next uh, January and February. So you're deferring some of those taxes for a year. So he or she, whoever your accountant, is going to give you some good ideas. Next thing, if you're saving, I, I've kind of reminded this because I was talking to uh, Tom Baker's uh, son, uh, John. And John and I were talking about, you know, he's making some pretty good money. What could he do? And he asked me a little bit about investing. He said, the first thing to do is make sure you have a retirement account. Because if you can put $6,000 in your retirement account, it's not really just $6,000 because that's a tax write-off. So you're going to save 25% on your taxes on that $6,000. So you're saving $6,000, but you're really benefiting about $7,200 because you're not paying $1,200 in taxes, so this is where we're talking about his first line of investment. So again, so okay, what can I do to save on taxes? One way is to just save, save money in some type of IRA. If you're on this uh, line and you're more than 50 years old, there's a great uh, program uh, through the government. It's called a, a defined benefit plan, which allows you to save as much as you want and not pay taxes. So just make sure you start educating yourself because as we grow in business, I have seen some people fall behind on these things. All of a sudden, they're not paying their taxes 
and it gets them into trouble. We just want to make sure as you grow in your business, you also grow into a, um, a smarter businessman and a smarter entrepreneur. Um, last thing, if you're looking at your checking account right now, and all of a sudden you see that you have a surplus, now is the time to take your bonus. We take our bonuses on every quarter. When I say bonuses, theoretically you should be getting a paycheck. Getting a paycheck every single week, taxes are taking out, you're living off that. Any excess money is staying in your business. Now, the thing about having excess money in your business, it's great, but at the same time, there's a liability there. So if Mr. Baker's got $100,000 in his uh, school checking account, someone has an accident in school, sues the school, sues the corporation, now he's liable because he has that $100,000 that someone could take. If he puts that in his personal account, then the uh, um, corporation's going to uh, shield him. So just saying that if you have excess money in your business checking account, this is a good time of the, uh, the year to take some of that, put it in your personal account. If your school ever needs it, you can always give a loan back to the school. So again, th this is bonus time. Some of you may be saying, I'm not ready for bonus. Okay, maybe <laughs> December you will be. But it's the same thing in December. December, we kind of zero out our checking account. We put it in our personal account. Again, we want to shield ourselves from liability. But I'm not a, a tax expert. I can just give you some things that I know. But one thing I do know that this month, I will be talking to my tax advisor, my accountant, and show him what I've done so far this year. So if I have to make any adjustments, I have three months to make those adjustments, and I highly recommend that. So that was a lot of stuff in 40 minutes. Uh, <laughs> uh, tomorrow, there won't be one of these meetings because I'm going to be going to Doug Bertrand's. We're going to be doing Instructor College uh, this weekend. So there'll be no Thursday meeting, and there'll be no Monday meeting next week. So if you, sometimes you go on Monday. I'm actually moving on Monday, so... I won't have internet. I'm going to be kind of closed down for that day. Everything will be back to normal on Tuesday. Any questions? We had a good group today. Thank you for participating. If you have any questions. Um, I have a question, sir. Yes, sir. I, just, I spoke to Mr. Storm yesterday, and I'm probably going to be doing that marketing thing he's doing with the, uh, that he's working on. Yes. Uh, how does that, I just, I didn't get to ask him, does that line up with everything that you guys are doing? I figured instead of trying, like a lot of times we do a lot of events that me and my wife do, and I think I want to just do what you guys are doing. I think that'll make it a lot easier, but does what he, is what he doing lines up exactly with what the marketing that you're doing for the month? Yes, because uh, okay. before we, we start this, uh, Mr. Storm and I go over everything, make sure that I'm supporting everything he's doing, he's supporting everything I'm doing. Perfect. What he's going to do is he'll manage your Facebook accounts. And so he's going to give you some uh, things during the week that are just stories, that are educational stories that parents may want to share with their friends. Okay. We're doing things like um, the breast cancer awareness. He's going to be sending out emails for that, and then he will boost that. So it's going to be going instead of just to the people on your Facebook that are friends, but he's going to boost on your community, so it's going to go to thousands of people. Okay. Great, thank you. Then you just set up your budget because he's just going to ask you how much do you want to spend per month. Okay. So you're going to have to decide if you want to spend $10 a day. Uh, just as a, a guideline, Johnny Ahmed, who you know is one of our clients in Canada, and he's just doing great, he spends between $300, uh, about $300 per month on Facebook advertising. Okay. Um, so I would do that. I may even start off a little stronger, especially because I want to get as many people as I can in October. So it'd be really nice if you can take that uh, 13 students and change it to 26 students for October. Okay. All right, sir. Yeah, it sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, also, I don't, I don't know who some of you people are using for websites. A corner man in uh, Get Students does do websites. And we're going to do a special um, webinar in two weeks on websites. I'm going to have our webmaster. Our webmaster is really, really good because he writes articles for magazines that uh, specialize in search engine optimization. He's also uh, tied in with Google, so he knows what Google is going to do. 
Um, so he's right on top of everything. If you just want to take a look at the sites, um, if you go to eastwestmma.com, that's what we did for Derek Frader. Uh, we just added in his Facebook uh, feed on that. So as he posts things on Facebook, it automatically appears on his website. Very, very cool. So, again, if you're looking to do something with your website, yeah, just check out eastwestmma.com, and we will have a special webinar in two weeks all about websites, so you can ask all the questions you want and um, get the answers that you need. Hey, everyone. Again, thanks again. If you're a guest on this and you would like to get more information how to participate every week, just send me an email. It's just greg at gregsilva.com. If not, everyone have a great weekend. I know I'm going to enjoy myself up in the uh, northwest, getting a little cool. It's still 100 degrees in Arizona, so I'm definitely looking forward to it. Thank you.